Alright guys, Zachman18 here. Welcome back to our Let's Play of Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney on the Nintendo 3DS. We are continuing on with chapter number 4. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one, which, uh, what, uh, what this chapter is called. I can't quite remember, but we're heading back into court now. It's Maya's trial. We were finally able to make some headway in this case. Seems like they're trying to accuse her of that other incident, too. We're dealing with one tough customer. The real culprit is a witch, but that much I'm certain of. But the question is who? I think I know the answer. The butler did it. J John Gray Earl. If they think I'm going to let them take Maya, they've got another thing coming. I have a sore throat today, so I'm going to kind of take it easy on the voices today, but I really uh, just wanted to get chapter 4 done today. Got two hours to get this done. Hopefully I can get this chapter done in two hours. So let's do this. We will now resume the trial of Maya Faye. First things first, the occult crime analysis have finished examining the evidence. They have tested the two magic gems from the witch's scepter. Goldor floated on the surface of the water, whereas Famalia sank. It was said that genuine magic gems float in pure water, wasn't it? Thus it has been established that the Famalia magic gem is a fake. Oh man. We got him. Order, order, order in court. This does not prove that Godor was used, of course. Nothing, nonetheless. The defense's theory does now seem more plausible. The court considers it worth looking into. You have no objection to that, do you, Inquisitor Barton? No, my lord. All right, so we figured out his fake. Now then, bring in the witness. Yeah, bring in the witness. See what he has to say. <laughs> Win witness, state your name and profession. Uh, I cannot remember his name for the, for my life. <laughs> um, my name... Okay. My name is Jean Greyer. I serve the late Master Bill Duke. Since his death, I have been tending to his dwelling and putting his research materials in order. Uh huh? Hmm, I don't know what it is, but... I feel there's something a bit different about Grey Earl today. Witness, there is something we need to clarify first of all. As you are no doubt aware, you have been accused of being a witch. Therefore, it is vital that you tell us. Are you a boy or a girl? Please, please hold on. Why, what is it? Excuse my rudeness, my lord, but at this time, I do not intend to answer that question. Why do you refuse to answer, witness? I have been following this trial from the gallery, and so I am fully aware of the utterly absurd accusations made against me. Alchemy, the art pursued by Master Bell Duke, is concerned with the rules and logic that govern nature. As someone who had been helping Master Bell Duke for quite some time, I dare say a theory is both illogical and impossible. Objection! The witch's scepter was thrown to the crime scene through a portal created by the magical spell Godor. That portal could only have been opened from your room. And what's more, one of the walls in your room is painted green! I believe anyone is free to paint their walls in whichever color they please. Besides, your theory relies on one magic gem being a fake. While that may have been proven true, another question was arisen. has arisen. Where could the genuine magic gem be? It must have been swapped with the fake one and discarded somewhere. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? If we assume as you have claimed that the witch used the spell Godor, that would mean the magic gem must have been swapped after creating the portal. So tell me, when and where would the witch have disposed of the magic gem? I see your point. Several people paid witnesses to the, witness to the incident, and the Knights of the Inquisition arrived at the scene immediately after. During that time, no one left the building, and the whole place was meticulously searched. Naturally, my room was my, my room was searched as well. Although there was not much to see, as I have few personal long, belongings. Sorry. <coughs> Despite our inception, nothing resembling a magic gem was found. I assure you, we have not overlooked anything. I would swear to it on my honor as a knight. So, Mr. Wright, if you wish to accuse me of being a witch, should you not first prove that there is a connection between me and this missing magic gem? Furthermore, I would appreciate it if you could please approach the matter in a rational way, like an alchemist. The house was searched very soon after the crime. If the gem was found, then it means Grey Earl hid it somewhere. Somewhere the Knights of the Inquisition would not have looked. Where could it be? The witness has made a valid argument. How will the defense respond? The knights who searched Sir Belduke's premises weren't looking for a magic gem. That's why there's a certain place they didn't consider searching. Hmm. Interesting, you really don't give up easily, do you? In that case, perhaps you could tell us all where the magic gem is. And Belduke's study in Grail's room and Grail's... But it, well, if they searched in Grail's room and they searched in his study, it must be that Grail has it and they didn't search his body. 
Sir Belduc's premises were thoroughly searched. I don't think anything would, would have been missed there. You anticipated that, and that's why you hid it in a blind spot that you knew wouldn't occur to the knights. A blind spot, you say? Well, where is it? It's somewhere on Je Jean Grail's person. What? It's on the witness. Don't tell me the witness has it in their pocket. You're just guessing, aren't you? You think you can just say anything you like. By the way, I'm afraid there are no pockets in my clothing. This is the second time I've seen Grail today, and both times I've had a feeling that something wasn't quite right. Maybe it's just me, but it could be related to the whereabouts of the magic gem. Defense, show us the location of the magic gem. Where do you think this witness hid the magic gem on the day of the crime? Um, well, he doesn't have any pockets. He must have just stuffed it down his shirt or something. I don't know, so I'm gonna guess right there. Got it! Got it. Witness, we met for the first time at Sir Belduc's premises. At that time, you had an amethyst attached to your collar. Oh. See, I don't notice that type of thing. <laughs> oh, that's right. Mr. Grail always wears that gemstone. Alchemists believe that amethysts emit positive energy. Amethysts are purple. But when I saw you in the waiting room this morning, the gemstone you were wearing was green, not purple. So my question now is, where is it gone? Where is that amethyst that you supposedly always wear? Wait, wait just a minute. The witness wears a purple gemstone. Is something amiss, Inquisitor Barnum? When we arrived at the crime scene, the witness came out to meet us. I recall the witness wearing a gemstone, but that gemstone was green. This is a phony phone call. We've been getting a lot of those lately. One second here. There we go. Yeah, we really need to just disconnect our house phone. It's really ridiculous how much spam we've been getting. Okay. Green? Amethysts aren't green, although amateurs sometimes mistake prosiolite for amethyst, but that's relevant now. Witness, you've been trying to pin the blame on the defendant. In order to do that, you replaced the Godor magic gem with a regular gemstone. We thought the, the witch who killed Sir Belduc had used the spell Familia. You know that if the witch's scepter with a familia, familia and Goldor magic gems attached was discovered at the crime scene, the suspect would be accused of committing both crimes, and that's precisely what happened. The girl captured at the crime scene was accused of slaying both Sir Belduc and Sir Leighton. That was your plan. You removed the Godor magic stone from the scepter and inserted your amethyst in its place. And then you attached the Godor gem to your collar! That's why when we saw you sh shortly after the incident you were wearing a green gemstone. To think that was in fact a magic gem. Okay, I can do that voice. However, I have to concede that you have surmised a logical connection between me and the missing magic gem. That's kind of similar to what I've been doing. Consequently, so. I am prepared to answer your questions. I got that voice pretty good. <laughs> good. I will repeat what I asked you previously. Witness, state your name, profession, and finally, your gender. My name is Jean Grail. Oh, this is Jean, okay. I have okay. been serving the late Master Belduke. As you can see, I wear a butler's outfit. But the truth is, as the defense claims... Oh boy. I am a girl. Waya. That's more like it. A girl? Unbelievable. <laughs> what? A butler is a girl? <laughs> Order, order, order in the court! So I'm just gonna take little water sips in between talking. Jean Grey Earl, are you declaring to this court that you are, in fact, female? Yes. But everyone in town was under the impression that you are a boy. Did you hear that? The ball is to curl, is it making her or her a maid? I knew there was something suspicious about him, I mean her. You know why, right? Think about it, all that alchemy, that's mighty suspicious. Just listen to them. Listen to the wild gossip and accusations. Alchemists pursue no one to the rules that govern nature. But to the townspeople, alchemy is no different to magic. 
Had they known I was a girl, they would have taken me for a witch. That's what Master Belgic was worried about. He told me he would be safer to pretend to be a boy. In other words, you disclose that you're a female, but deny that you're a witch? I would have thought that was obvious. She knew that once her gender came into question, she wouldn't have been able to conceal it. That's why she's made this public now. It was the most rational choice for her. Inquisitor Bana, may I ask you one question? Has all the evidence in this Golden Gentleman case already been presented? Why do you ask? As it stands, you do not have a single piece of evidence proving I am a witch. Given the lack of pertinent evidence against me, I would like to be permitted to return to my duties. Hmm. What say you, Inquisitor Barnum? It has been proven that the two gems were swapped. However, it may also have been possible for the accused to have done so. Objection. Maya had no reason to swap the gems. This is a place of judgment. There is no need for us to understand the reasons behind a criminal's actions. Huh? After all, those whom we judge are otherworldly creatures. They are witches. It is impossible for a human being to understand the reasoning of a witch. Is there nothing we can do at this rate, my LZ? Barnum still thinks Maya is a witch. We made it this far, and yet it feels like we're back at stage one. It seems there are no more rational arguments against me. Now, if you will kindly excuse me. I don't have much on Greyro when it comes to the professor's case, but should I just let her go? Wait and see what happens. Continue questioning or ask about another case. Ooh, let's see if she was involved. There is nothing else I can follow up on regarding the professor's case. So what can I do? There's only one other option. Miss Grayer, I have to ask you to remain at the witness stand. Is there something else you wish to ask me? Your testimony is not over yet. There's still something you need to tell us about. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid I cannot help you. I have told you I co all I could about this incident. And I'm afraid you've got the wrong idea, Miss Grail. Your Honor, w what this witness needs to testify about is not the professor's unfortunate incident, but rather the incident from three months ago, namely Sir Belduke's death. As she was pre present in the building at the time, working as a live-in butler, she needs to testify about the events of that day. Wow, I completely forgot that we were that's what we were accusing her of. It's been two days. Come on, Zach. About Sir Belduke's death. The fact that one of the magic gems was swapped leads me to a single conclusion. Both crimes, the murder of Sir Belduke and the transmutation of the professor, professor were the work of the same for the same witch. I almost said switch. The truth behind the alchemist's death may also hold the answer to this case. Hmm. What is your opinion on this, Inquisitor Barnum? I'll allow you to have your way this time, Sir Blue Knight. The Inquisition has no objections. Inquis Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum, it seems you have lost that unyielding attitude so admired by the townspeople. Here you are now, letting a novice defendant lead you by the nose. It is hard to believe you have been known as the unwavering sword of justice for your usually cool-headed judgment. You know a little about me, witness. Do you think I care about defending my name? It is this town that I wish to defend. Sir Belduke's murder is the only case to have remained unsolved for so long. Jean Grey Earl, you shall now testify about it. God, it seems so calm. <laughs> you should be scared. <laughs> As demanded by both the defense and inquisition, the witness will testify about Sir Belduke's death. Any questions? No, my lord. I must, however, mention one more thing before we begin. If it cannot be proven that Jean Grail is a witch as claimed by the defense, the court will irrevocably consider Maya Fey to be the witch responsible for both crimes. Is that understood? You have no choice, Sir Blue Knight. If you don't want the trial then right now, ready your sword and face the challenge that awaits. But the opponent is a real witch. It's the gamble that puts Maya's life at stake. Uh-oh. Maya! After all, That's right. So, let's do it! The defense accepts the conditions. Let's proceed with the trial. Hmm. Inquisitor Barnum, you begin. We shall start with a brief summary of the incident. About three months ago, in the dead of night, Sir Bell Duke the Alchemist was murdered. The crime took place in his study, just as with this incident. The room had been locked from the inside. The victim was found still seated in the chair at his desk, so we can assume he was attacked while working. There were very clear strangulation marks visible in his neck. Alright, we'll be back with more of Blatant vs. Right right after this. Stay tuned, everybody. Let's go, let's go, let's go.
Let's go, let's go.